Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Osprey Nebula, which is a 32 liter commuter kind of all purpose bag. I feel like this video is a little overdue given the popularity of this bag. I've gotten a couple of requests to feature it on the channel in the past, and it seemed like a really great addition to Osprey's already impressive lineup of everyday bags. And so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to use this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall appearance, the Nebula definitely has an appearance that reminds me of some of the other Osprey bags that I've used. So it's a pretty functional look. It's got some attachment points, pockets. It's not super sleek or modern per se, but I still think it's a versatile look that's gonna work well for you know walking around the city, going into the outdoors, or traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels solidly built. This exterior fabric is a recycled nylon that feels like it's gonna hold up pretty well to rougher usage. It's gonna offer a nice amount of weather resistance, and it also feels like it helps keep the weight of the bag down. It's a little bit more flexible. It's not super rigid, which I generally like. And then you also have some really nice YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side. These have a pretty nice elastic material. They offer a good amount of capacity. I was able to fit my 26 ounce Yeti Rambler. That starts to get a little bit tight, especially if you pack the main area out. Uh, so that's something that you'll have to keep in mind, but it does fit and it's a pretty deep compartment. So I like that it doesn't feel like my water bottle is gonna fall out easily if I happen to tip the bag over or rest it on its side. And then when you take it out because of the elasticity, it just kind of hugs the bag when it's not in use. So that's always a nice additional feature. And then along the sides, you have compression straps that you can use to tighten the bag when it's not quite as full. I like that they have these easy to release buckles. So that makes them great for holding something like a tripod, a jacket, particularly if you want to place a tripod in the water bottle pocket, you can secure it here near the top. The compression straps do go over the water bottle pocket, so you'll have to make sure that they're nice and loose if you want to put something real thick in there. Uh, but always nice to have these kind of additional attachment points for added flexibility. And then on the front of the bag, you have a little loop down near the bottom. That's going to be a good spot to attach a bike light. You have the name of the bag, the Nebula. And then you have the Osprey logo, kind of the traditional one. Blends in pretty nicely to the front of the bag. Stands out a little bit, but maybe not quite as much as the North Face. At the top of the bag, you have a pretty nice carrying handle. It's got kind of this seatbelt-like material. Offers some padding, feels durable, like it's not gonna tear on you or anything like that. It's interesting how it's right above the shoulder strap, so it's not actually at the top. So it doesn't stick out above the bag, which is nice. It's kind of subdued, blends into the bag, but it's still pretty easy to reach down and grab it when you need to. And then taking a look at the capacity, it comes in at around 32 liters, which is a really interesting size. It's a little bit larger than what I would typically want to use for my everyday carry, but not quite as large as some of the one bag travel options that I use for longer trips. So it falls kind of in between larger EDC, minimal travel bag. It was able to hold all the items that I typically have with me on a day-to-day -day easily with some leftover space. And I like that even though it's a little bit larger, it never feels overwhelmingly big or bulky, which still made it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying onto most domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. It feels like Osprey has been updating the harnesses on some of their newer bags. They don't feel quite as robust as they used to. They do have some padding, it's pretty soft and broken in right out of the box. It just doesn't feel quite as you know stiff or supportive, I guess. They do have some breathability. Uh, the straps are also a little on the narrower side considering the size of this bag and how much you can load it out with. So you know, generally it felt comfortable, particularly when I had it loaded out for EDC, but if I was walking around for a long period of time with a travel setup, I could start to see some fatigue maybe starting to set in. Um, so it's good that it's a little bit wider near the top, but generally just doesn't feel quite the same as other similarly sized bags that I've used. Has this interesting setup along the shoulders at the top that does allow it to kind of, you know, fit nicely. It doesn't have load lifters or anything like that. You have some loops here on the straps that'll be great for clipping on additional accessories, maybe a light, hang on your sunglasses. And then you have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight that also has a little safety whistle. 
Moving into the back paneling, this has also been pretty comfortable. I like that the padding here feels a little bit more robust and supportive than the one that was on the straps. It's slightly firmer, but without you know, becoming uncomfortable. You also have this nice mesh here to provide breathability. And there's also kind of these ridges here in the back paneling to provide you with some airflow. It doesn't have deep air channels like some of the bags that I typically like to use, but I still think that this did a pretty good job of helping to provide ventilation as I was using this throughout the day. And then down at the bottom, the last thing I'll call out is that it does include a removable waist strap that is gonna help stabilize the pack. Doesn't really add that much support, in my opinion. I don't tend to use these too much, so I was happy that I could actually remove it if I wanted to, but if you're commuting, going for a hike or something like that, and you wanna just make sure that the bag isn't moving around, it's good that this is actually included. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. Starting off on the front, you have this elastic mesh sort of slip pocket. Reminds me a lot of the one that's on the North Face Recon. So this is always a really interesting, useful pocket to throw in some of the items that you're grabbing more regularly throughout the day, like a jacket, some gloves, pouches. This is my packable rain jacket. It fits in there, so you do have some nice elasticity. Also a good spot for an additional pair of flip-flops or shoes when I'm traveling, a bike light. So I like how much space this provides, the fact that it's elastic, and then it's also linked to the compression straps. So if you wanna get a little bit more space, you can loosen these up. And then if you place something in there that you don't want slipping out, you can really tighten it down, make sure that that's secured to prevent it from sliding out. So nice implementation there, pretty interesting idea. And then above that, there is a quick access pocket. And I really like the zipper pulls that Osprey has on many of their bags. You just have a really easy grip to open these up. They also have the rain flaps that come over the zipper since these don't have aqua guards or anything like that to provide some protection against the elements. And then this is a great quick access pocket. It still offers enough volume for some of the bulkier things that I might be using more regularly. So at the moment I have my sunglasses with their case. That fits in there easily. I also have my Apple AirPods with the amount of space that was offered here. I could have also tossed in maybe one of my chargers, portable battery or something like that. And then on the inside, you also have a soft lining that's gonna help prevent against scratching for anything more sensitive that you wanna store here. Up next, there is a larger admin style compartment with a little bit of internal organization. This doesn't open clamshell, but it does go all the way down to the bottom of the bag. So it's a pretty tall compartment, which I'm always a fan of. I feel like that just gives you a little more flexibility, particularly if you're wanting to use this as a travel bag. And the compression straps do come over the zipper, so if you want to have a little bit of an easier time kind of accessing it or flipping this up, you'll have to release those. And then, yeah, good amount of space towards the bottom for additional pouches, another jacket. At the moment, I have the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, one liter in there, just to kind of showcase the amount of volume that's offered there. And then on the back, you have a little bit of organization, a couple of slip pockets, so here on the left, you have this elastic, slightly larger one. I currently just have lightning cable, uh, but a good spot for a portable hard drive, battery, a mouse. Then you have a couple of slots for a pen or a stylus. I just have a pen there at the moment. And then on the other side, similar style compartment to the one we saw on the left. Really like the mesh that's used here. At the moment, I just have my Apple Magic Mouse. Then you also have a little lanyard with a clip that's gonna be a good spot for your keys, a multi-tool or a flashlight, which is what I currently have here. And then on the back, you have a zipper compartment for any items that you don't want getting lost into the bottom of the bag. Just kind of an open space here. At the moment, I have wallet. Then I have a little manicure set and a deck of playing cards. The next area we're going to be taking a look at is the laptop compartment. This has a dedicated laptop area on the back. Like some of the other compartments, it has the zipper flap that comes over the laptop zipper, it also has a reverse coil zipper, so it's a little bit more protected than some of the other zippers and different compartments. And so this has the quote unquote TSA style laptop compartment that opens up flat, which I generally don't use that much. I find that you know you still, when you travel, have to take your laptop out. So having this ability to open it up in this manner, I've never found a huge benefit to it. Uh, but it's nice that you have a dedicated laptop area in general and kind of a tech area as well. So I'll start off here on the other side from the laptop compartment, you have a nice zippered compartment. It's got a nice kind of mesh area. It'd be a good spot for chargers or additional accessories that you wanna keep you know, easily accessible with your tech. I don't generally use this too much because I don't wanna create any bulk 
bulky kind of bulging that might press up against my laptop, particularly because you have this other slip pocket here that's a good spot for a tablet. I currently have my iPad mini in here. This isn't super padded per se. It is more of a slip pocket, but I always like having a dedicated area for a tablet so that I can reach down, grab it, and know that it's separated from some of the other items in my bag. And then moving on to the other side, really good laptop compartment here. You can see that the sleeve is well padded and it's properly suspended off the bottom of the ground. You can see it's really nicely pulled up there. So when you place your bag down, don't have to worry about your laptop bumping the ground. And so good amount of space as well. Currently what I have here is a 13 inch MacBook Air, but you should definitely be able to fit a 15 or 16 inch laptop here comfortably, plenty of leftover space. And so the sleeve itself, not quite as rigid as some of the other laptop compartments that I like to use, but still I like that it's a little thicker than pulling my device out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No fleece lining on either side. That might be as this is meant to double as an area to store a hydration bladder. You can see that there's a path through here that comes up near the top where the shoulders are. You can store a bladder, put the, uh, the hose through. Uh, and so in that case, having a fleece lining might not be the best if you have something that's wet there. Uh, so a little bit of dual purpose action there. And generally, you know, with the amount of space and padding that's offered here and the fact that it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground, it feels like my device is going to be well protected while I'm on the go. The last area we're going to be taking a look at is the main compartment. And so this is a top loading bag, which means it doesn't open up fully flat clamshell style like a typical travel bag. But at 32 liters, this is in that size range where this could be considered a minimal travel bag. So I actually have it loaded out with more of a travel setup at the moment as I was curious how much it would actually be able to hold with this spacious main area. And I actually have a couple of packing cubes in here. You can see that it's not overly packed. There's still a little bit of space here that does share volume with some of the other compartments. So I kind of distributed the items throughout. But this was able to hold my smaller compressible pack and cube from Peak Design, as well as the larger one. So both of them fit in there pretty comfortably, meaning that this can work well as a minimal travel bag. It's not gonna be able to hold quite as much as a 35 or 40 liter bag, um, but you can see that it comes up a decent amount. It's a very simple layout, no additional internal organization here. I like that it has the lighter, kind of higher contrast lining. And then this can still work as an everyday bag, particularly if you're a little taller, because it doesn't have a super rigid shape. I like that it gets fairly slim. It'll mold around the items that you place on the inside. And so I'll toss in some of the things that I would use for more of an EDC setup, just to give you a sense of how much it can hold. I have some of the bulkier items that I would typically wanna pack in with me. So the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, two liters, then I have my DJI Mavic Mini with its case. I have a tech pouch from Air, which is a little bit slimmer. You toss that in the Evergood Civic Access one liter if I wanted to toss it into the main area now. Then I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. And then even a packable rain jacket. All these things, as you can see, fit very easily into this main compartment. This is typically what I would, would have with me on a day to day and there's still more than enough space for a lunchbox, an additional change of clothes, if I was gonna use this as a gym bag, but just keeping it with those items there. For now, let me close this up. You have the compression straps, so I can cinch this down a bit so that it doesn't look as bulky. I still have the front organizational area where I could hold additional things if I wanted to. You can see that there's actually extra volume there. I'm not gonna pack it out with a ton of stuff. Again, this is more of an EDC setup. Um, and then you have the internal organization, quick access. I will tighten down here near the bottom as well, just to get it as slim as I can. You can see that most of the items are concentrated down near the bottom, but I was able to slim up the top to just make it a little bit more manageable for my day to day. Again, it is a little bit taller, bigger, which might be great for people that are taller or that have a longer commute that need just a little bit more space throughout the day or if you're looking for something that can work for a trip. So really like the versatility of the bag in general. It's got a nice feature set. I really like the layout all throughout, similar to some of the other Osprey bags that I featured on the channel. If you're looking for something a little lighter weight with that amount of space, this is going to be a really solid option to take a look at. 
And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Osprey Nebula. You can currently purchase this on the company site or on REI or Amazon for around $140. I have seen the price go down a little bit depending on the color combination. Sometimes they have sales. At $140, it feels like a pretty reasonable price point considering the features and the build quality that it has to offer. And it's also gonna compare well to some of the other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Proxima backpack, which is another great bag from Osprey's lineup. I've really enjoyed using that bag. It comes in at 30 liters. So pretty similar in size to this one, maybe slightly smaller. Uh, but not hugely noticeable based off my testing so far. The harness system on that one is not gonna feel quite as robust and the organizational layout is a little bit different. You know, it's got the compression straps along the front versus kind of the elastic compartment. The laptop compartment is also a little different. It doesn't have the TSA style one that opens up flat. Um, so just a few different nuances and the differences on the organization, but still a really versatile bag. It, you know, is able to hold an impressive amount. It's got a nice pocketing layout. And if you're looking for something, you know, kind of with Osprey's aesthetic, it's gonna have a lot of versatility, a good amount of space, and it's gonna work for a variety of use cases. And that's gonna be an awesome one to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the North Face Surge backpack, which like this one is a little bit larger. It comes in at 31 liters. I like the harness system on that a little bit more. It feels like it offers a little more support. In my opinion, it's maybe not quite as breathable, uh, but it does a great job. I know a lot of people aren't crazy about the updates on the harness on it, but so far my experience has been pretty good. Beyond that, the Surge has a great organizational layout. It's got a couple of really nice quick access pockets on the front, an admin area, it's got a large main compartment, and then the laptop area, I really like on the Surge. It's well padded, it's suspended, it offers a nice amount of space. I actually prefer it to the one on this bag here. And then it just has, you know, really nice recycled sort of materials. So very similar Osprey and North Face always in my opinion. And if you're looking for something with maybe a little bit more of a robust harness with this size and sort of style, that's gonna be an awesome one to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Fjall Raven Raven 28, which is hanging on the wall behind me. I've talked about that bag a lot this year as it's just continues to be one of my favorites. It's super versatile. It's got a great pocket layout, a lot of good built-in organization, external water bottle pockets, a well-padded laptop compartment. The harness system on that was updated to make it a little bit more breathable. And it comes in at a you know pretty reasonable price point. Uh, Fjall Ravens G1000 fabric also has held up well for me over the years. And you know if you're looking for something in this sort of a size range at 28 liters that can work for a variety of use cases, and that's also gonna have a little bit more of a heritage style vibe, and that's gonna be one of the best options to consider. With that being said, the Osprey Nebula holds up really well against all those options. And if you're a fan of Osprey's aesthetic and layouts and you're looking for a comfortable and spacious kind of all-purpose bag, this is gonna be a really solid option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Nebula and how it compares to some of the other popular EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel and for these suggestions. This is a bag that was called out in the comments. As always, I'm watching, looking for ideas. So thank you for shouting those out. Keep them coming. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.